Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of scales and how to set up a basic patch. If uh, there's anything you want covered in more detail or if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. So, scales is a quantizer module, meaning it takes a signal at the pitch input and quantizes it based on selected notes in order to output uh, those notes out of the, uh, the pitch outputs. So in order for it to do its thing, it needs some kind of sound source and it needs uh, some kind of uh, input to be quantized. Of course it has a sequencer mode, but we'll get into that later. So to start we're going to take the output A and connect that to our Dixie here. And I've already got the Dixie connected to my output. And the note that's selected in red, this C here, shows that Scales is currently outputting a C. And if we deselect that note, we can hear Dixie changing the note that it's playing. But just because Scales is outputting a C does not mean Dixie is playing a C because Dixie has its own tuning controls. So in order to make sure that they are indeed playing the same notes. Oh, look at that. That's pretty lucky. It's uh, already close to a C at least. Okay, so now Scales is outputting a C and the Dixie is indeed playing a C. So they're both on the same page. So let's give Scales something to quantize. We're going to take uh, this second Dixie running in LFO range and connect that to the pitch input and immediately Scales starts going pretty nuts. And this is because the Dixie oscillator output is very wide and Scales can take a negative 10 to positive 10 volt range, so also a very wide range of voltages. Uh, and as you can hear, it's probably a wider range than we want to use. So what we're going to do to remedy that is use Quadrat, which uh, channel 1 is set up to work as an attenuator, meaning it's going to reduce or attenuate the voltage range being sent from Dixie to the pitch input. So as I turn down this knob, we're going to get fewer and fewer notes until we're only getting one note. And as I bring this up, we're going to get a wider and wider range of notes. And I can adjust the Dixie to control the rate of those notes. Now we're going to get a slower change of notes. And we have about a third of the range of the Dixie going to the pitch input. So another cool thing about Quadrat is the uh, the channels feed from left to right, and you'll notice this channel is set to be an attenuverter. That's what the plus minus uh, side of the switch means. And so if I take the output of channel B, I still have channel A attenuating the range, and I can use B to offset the range. So what's happening now is channel A is constraining the range, channel B is offsetting it up or down. So we can use these two knobs as well as the rate of the Dixie to control how this melody sounds coming out of scales. Of course the other thing we can do is select different notes. We can just tap notes on and off. The selected notes show up in green, the currently playing note shows in red, so we can see scales going through uh, the, the notes that we have selected. So right now I'm just manually and fairly randomly selecting notes. But Scales has a number of scales already saved into it. And so if we hit the load button here, we can select different scales using the white keys. And we can uh, use the black keys to select different banks of scales. 
If you check out the manual, it has all the scales listed, but uh, it's basically Western scales on these bottom three, and the more exotic on the top two. We've got our world scales on the top one here. And of course, if you make your own custom scales that you like, you can save them and replace slots. And it is possible to go back to the factory default. If we push the root button here, we can see that the root note is set to C. But if we press a different note, we can transpose that scale around a new root note. If you're working with a scale and you realize that the root note is, is not set correctly and you want to change the root note but keep the selected notes, you just hold down the button and that will change the root note without changing your selected notes. So now let's take a look at the trigger output. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to take the Dixie and run it through my VCA. And I'm going to take the trigger output, connect that to trigger one on my quadra, and take envelope one and connect that to my VCA. So now the trigger output is controlling the VCA using function one of quadra. You'll notice nothing's happening right now, but uh, Scales is still cycling through a series of notes. And so in order to get this trigger output working, we're going to go into the config menu. And so the config menu lets you access all the parameters on the right hand side here. So right now what we want is a trig. So now whenever the note changes at A, it's sending a trigger to control quadra. And you can do that with B as well. So this is still working because the pitch is still changing for output B even though nothing is connected. And both of these can be connected at once. If we connect a trigger to the uh, trigger input, so in this case I'm using the gate output from planar, Everything stops, but if I manually trigger planar, then we're able to uh, manually trigger notes. So what's happening now is... So what's happening now is when Scales receives a trigger and the note changes at A, it's outputting a trigger. If we reduce the range and there's no note change at A, there's not going to be any triggers sent out. Uh, once those notes start changing, the trigger output resumes. If we deactivate the two trigger modes, scales will simply pass through any trigs at the input to the output. So that's why if there's nothing connected, there's no triggers output, and it's not until we connect that uh, gate signal that we actually get triggers sent from scales. While it's pretty quick and easy to manually select the notes that you want, scales can also learn a scale from an external source like Metropolis. So all we need to do for that is to connect the pitch output to the pitch input on scales, and we also need to connect the gate output to the trigger input so scales knows when to read new notes. And so now all we do is go into learn mode, and we hit run on the sequencer. And you can see Scales is adding new notes to the sequence. And I already had a few notes in there, so uh, if we want to start this new scale completely from scratch, we just hold down learn. And you'll, you'll notice there's still a lot 
there's still a lot of notes and I think it's added a few extra ones. So what I'm going to do is go into the config menu and if I hold a trig, what this does is set the trigger delay. And so sometimes with sequencers, it reads the timing of the pitch input slightly incorrectly. And what this does is adds a delay to offset for timing inconsistencies. So now if we clear that scale and hit run again, now we're getting a more accurate uh, representation of that uh, gypsy scale. And that's how you can learn a new scale into scales. So once you do that, uh, you can save that scale to any one of the slots that you want. And so now we have that scale saved and I can go back to that whenever I want.